Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome back to video number 17. This is the third and last video in the short series on hair cutting. It's chapter 16 in this book. If you're using the older version of the book, it's still chapter 16. We're going to review today tools, something that I mean, we all understand tools, shears, razors, clippers, but we don't usually understand the kind of questions the state will ask. Okay, so to jump right into it, shears, people call them scissors. There actually is a distinction. It has to do with the length. Under six inches is called one thing, longer than six inches is called something else. Okay, that tends to be a question on the barber exam, not the cosmetology exam. So we're not going to spend any time beating that into people's heads. Okay, shears or scissors, call them what you feel like. Page 370 to 378 talks extensively about this. Now, what is the state going to ask you? Here's a question they ask quite frequently. Which digit of your hand, right? We call them fingers. They're not. These are fingers. This is your thumb. They're called digits. The state board exam says which digit of your hand controls the moving or the cutting blade of your shears. Which digit of your hand controls the moving or the cutting blade of your shears? And the answer is your thumb. Now, I guarantee you, if you stop the video right here <clears throat> and go and find your shears and put your hands in, oh yeah, it is your thumb. But it's something that we don't really think about. We just do it. All of a sudden, you're on a written test where you don't get to just do it and demonstrate. You have to actually think about it in terms of black and white letters on a page. It's your thumb that controls the cutting or the moving blade of the shears. The next favorite question, which finger controls the non-moving or the non-cutting blade? It's your index finger. Now, some people will use this finger. Some people will use this finger. It doesn't really matter, okay? It has more to do with the size of your hands than anything else. I've had enough students who use this one or this one. It has no difference. The state says the answer is your index finger. Your index finger controls the non-moving or the non-cutting blade of the shears. Now, it is, that is eight pages in your textbook. If you have the time, by all means, read those eight pages. But I've just told you the two things you must get out of those eight pages. Now, on page 370, it talks about the part of a razor. Most cosmetology school students are not particularly fond of using razors. I, I wasn't. I don't really know why, but it's just the way it is. The state doesn't care if you use a razor or not. They only care if you know the answer to the questions. Here's what we're going to ask you about the parts of a razor. The tang. The tang is the little finger rest. <clears throat> Every razor has one. Some shears have one. It's still called the tang or little finger rest. They'll ask you about the shoulder of the razor, the shank of the razor, and the handle of the razor. And they will ask you the following two questions. Which digit of your hand goes on the shank of the razor? And I will tell you the answer is your thumb. If you look on page 370, they'll show you a picture or a diagram. Your thumb goes on the shank of the razor. The pointer, index, and middle finger go on the shoulder. You should expect to see these two questions on your test. Which digit of your hand goes on the shank, which goes on the shoulder? We're going to move right along here. Texturizing. Probably going to have one question here. There's point cutting, notching, effilating, slicing, and carving. Again, probably none of you have really thought about the word effilating or carving, except with the turkey on Thanksgiving. It would be in your interest to look at page 394 in your textbook and learn these terms. They won't help you cut people's hair, and I don't think you'll ever have a customer who says, now, before we begin, I'd like my hair effilated, please. I've never had that in 42 years. But you will see the word on your state board exam, even if it's not the answer. You still have to know what it is so you know that it's not the answer. Okay? Clippers, also known as edgers and trimmers, on page 402 of your book. Here's the thing the state likes to ask about clippers. They are best used on dry or damp hair, not wet hair, for a couple of obvious reasons. They're electric, and generally water and electricity don't work well together. 
Now, there are some very high-end clippers you can buy and use on wet hair. The state asks you the question, clippers are best used on hair in what condition, dry or damp? The other thing about cutting wet hair is, if it's really soaking wet, it gets on the floor and becomes very slippery and someone, probably you, will end up falling. We have a, a young man that works for us who had this unfortunate incident three weeks ago and now has both sprained wrists and he's walking around like this with things on his hands because he can't bend his wrists. It's, you know, a hard way to prove a simple point, okay? Very wet hair can be dangerous on the barbershop or salon floor. The state asks you a simple question. Clippers are best used when hair that is dry or damp. Now, before we end this video, we're going to review some terminology that we talked about on the first hair cutting video because it's very important and you need to understand this. Parietal ridge is the widest part of your head, sometimes called the hat band area or parietal crest on your state board exam. Whether it says parietal ridge, parietal crest, or hat band area, answer is the same. The widest area of your head. There's the reference points. This is almost a guaranteed question at this point. Reference points where the surface of the head changes shape or angle or direction. Think about this. Most, we have this vision that our head is round, like a bowling ball, it, it, it rarely is. Most of our head is sort of an, an oval or oblong shape. It's flatter on the sides. At about this point, it starts to round out. That's your reference point where the head changes shape. Apex, the Latin word apex meaning the top. Okay, the top of your head, the highest point of your head. The occipital bone, the hindmost bone, H-I-N-D-M-O-S-T, the hindmost bone of your forehead. Depending on the shape of the person's head, sometimes it's very obvious, sometimes it's not, but it's always there. The crown is the area between the apex and the occipital. So it's this area right here. We tend to think of the crown as up here. We see the Queen of England with the crown on her head, or now the King of England. The crown is back here. On your state board exam, the crown of the head is the area between the apex and the occipital bone. There's the nape, which is the area below the occipital bone. And as I said in an earlier video, this is discussed in three chapters of your book. Right? That's a pretty good clue to be on your test. It's the area below the occipital bone. It's the most resistant area on the head. So if you're trying to do a permanent wave on straight hair, you need to put the perm solution in the nape because that's the most resistant area. If you're trying to do a chemical relaxer on curly hair, you must start at the nape because that's the most resistant area. If you're trying to bleach, and the state board does not like the word bleach, they like the word decolorize. If you're trying to decolorize your client's hair, you must begin in the most resistant area, which is the nape. So there's at least four possible times this question could be on your test. Hair cutting, permanent waving, chemical relaxing, or bleaching. It's going to be on your test. The nape is the most resistant area. There's horizontal lines, like the horizon at the beach. They run side to side. They make your eyes move side to side. They're excellent for creating weight in a haircut, especially on thin, fine hair. There's vertical lines running up and down, okay? like vertical blinds in your house. They make your eyes move this way. They're excellent for making things look thinner and taller. There's diagonal lines. They're in between vertical and horizontal. As far as guidelines, you've got stationary and traveling. Hair density and hair texture. It's a given, guaranteed at least once on your test, if not both. Hair density versus hair texture. One has to do with the number of hairs. One is the size of each piece of hair. Then there's the moving blade of the shears and the non-moving blade of the shears. There's the tang, the shoulder, the shank, and the handle of a razor. Now, at the beginning of video number 15, I pointed out that this chapter is not particularly heavily tested. And I've learned the hard way that whenever I say something is not heavily tested, students here, it's not tested at all. You know, I didn't say it wasn't tested at all. I said it's not heavily tested. 
The problem with chapter on hair cutting is that it's only 40 pages long, but there's so much information in there. So I try to break it down to you in these three videos of what you really need to know. We're going to wrap all this up right now. And I'm going to point out a couple of things to you in closing. You should be on YouTube watching our videos, 2022 Cosmetology Questions and Answers. We took the liberty of using a picture of Milady's textbook on the front and we superimposed in big letters, 2022. When you see that, you'll know that's us. When you click on it, you'll see our business mascot. Her name is Boo Boo. You can't miss her. Okay. Watch those videos. If you still need more information, and, and you do because please don't, don't. We cannot possibly cover the thousand pages in this book on these short videos. We try to give you the most important points of each chapter, but it's impossible to cover everything. The state board exam has approximately 2,000 questions in their computer test bank, and they will literally push a button and your test will pop out. Everyone in the room has a different test. If you take the test 50 times, you'll have 50 different tests. People call us all the time and they say things like, oh my God, I got a 72 on my test. I went back, I got a 63. I did worse. Because you have all different questions. If the questions were the same every time, every teacher would know every question by the time his or her class had all 50 students had taken the test. Every teacher would know every question, everyone would pass. Now we know that's not true. The pass rate nationally is about 60% across the country, which means out of every 10 students, four fail, six pass. That, that's not good numbers. We have every question. In this textbook, it says Cosmetology State Board Examination Review. If you go to our website, www.cosmetologystateboardexam.com, you click on your state, you get the information for your state. It comes with a guarantee. You must have it for at least a month to study. You can't get it on Friday and take your test on Monday. It's too many questions. You can't learn them. You study this book for at least a month. You will pass your test. Our pass rate is just touching on 99%. And if you don't pass, you keep the book and we give you your money back. Now, obviously, if we had to refund a lot of people, we'd be out of business. So clearly, our book works. The numbers prove the book works. Watch our videos. Focus on the chapters I tell you and get our book. Okay. With that, let me just say one more thing. Please send us your comments. It's the only way we know what you need to know about. Okay, you can call us, but people don't <laughs> usually. They send us comments. Please send us your comments. We know what you'd like to see. Subscribe to our channel. It helps us offset the cost of doing this and it's free to you. And when you subscribe, if you send us your email, we will send you a free list of all the vocabulary terms you will need to know on the test. Thanks so much for watching us and look forward to seeing you on the next video.